so I, I, I first got sober uh, at Hazelden. Uh, I went off to, to rehab in Minnesota, and, and I consider that a, a, one of the great blessings of my life. And I really got that the 12 steps were going to be central if I was going to be able to develop a, a, a long-term strategy to walk, uh, not just to walk a path of recovery, but to, to actually realize what I consider to be the, the main promise. And the main promise was that I'm not going to be thinking about drugs and alcohol and doing drugs and alcohol for the rest of my life. I needed that to be true. And uh, I can remember the day that I woke up and I realized, wow, I can't remember the last time I actually thought about doing drugs or alcohol. But an interesting thing happened for me. My life got so much better through the 12 steps. And I found out the hard way that you can recover from acute addiction and still be stuck in other forms of addiction. So for me, I was stuck in gambling, which means I had a, a really skewed relationship with money. I had difficult relationships with women, so a lot of codependency issues coming up. And I also was smoking cigarettes, which simply to me means I had a skewed relationship with my body and also a, a difficult time passing time without something sort of artificial to help me get through the day. And so there I was, sober, but in a lot of pain. Uh, I'd, fi I'd found this promise of not thinking about drugs and alcohol anymore, but I found that I wasn't yet free. It took a little while. I had to learn how to breathe properly. That was the first lesson. I had to learn how to move properly. I had to learn how to regulate my own emotional state through the breath and through certain meditations. And once I had learned all those tools, which I consider now very basic tools that every human being ought to know, but once I had that in my arsenal, I could literally start to, like for example, I wake up and just set myself up for the best day ever by, by engaging in these practices. And I could see how my diet was directly affected to, was directly connected to the way I felt, the feelings that were coming up for me. Uh, so if I could shift my emotional state by shifting my diet slightly, or by sitting down in meditation, think of the, how empowering that is. So I say to people in 12-step recovery particularly, because we talk so much about powerlessness, think about how important it is to know where you're powerless. It's very important. It's equally important to know where you're powerful. And where we have power is we have power over our own breath. And when we use the breath, to change our emotional state or to enter a meditative state, we're starting to gain control over our mind. It's, it's the most exciting thing uh, to be someone who struggled so hard in addiction and to feel so helpless and then to be given a set of tools where you actually had a choice. There's actually something you could do to change the course of your day, to, to set the course of your day and to live on purpose and on your mission.